Steve Warner is the chief strategist for the Charleston Regional Development Alliance. And last week, he was one of the panelists for the Charleston Forum. I speak exclusively with Steve for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Steve Warner, it's so good to meet you. It's great to meet you, Quentin. Thanks for having me. Oh, anytime. I understand that you are the chief strategist for the Charleston Regional Development Alliance. And obviously last week you were one of the panelists for the Charleston Forum. Right. What is it like for you to be you these days? <laughs> Well, you know, I have to say last week I was uh, very grateful for the organizers to put that on for the second year in a row, and it was a very important conversation to commemorate the, uh, the tragedy from two years ago, and I think that conversation is mission critical, and I was privileged to be a part of it, and our conversation was about the possibility of um, economic mobility, upward mobility for people living here, but um, it's good to be... Uh, in Charleston right now. I think there's a lot of good things happening. Sure. Yeah. Economics in Charleston. Mm -hmm. What is the state of economic development here in Charleston, in your mind? Um, we are having a 10-year plus run of economic success. So our work uh, ultimately is to serve as a catalyst for long-term regional prosperity by attracting the world's best companies, talent, and entrepreneurs. Um, we were founded 25 years ago as a result of the base closure, right. the base closure. Um, and so we're a public-private organization funded in part by the three counties and the five largest cities, but by over 100 private sector business people to essentially do job creation and capital investment by attracting companies like Volvo and Boeing and Mercedes and Thorn Research and the list goes on. And so. We've had a tremendous amount of success um, over the last um, five years. Over 50,000 jobs have been created in the Charleston region, and that's almost one in four for the entire state of South Carolina. Right. And we're projecting another 35,000 plus over the next five years in terms of just based on what's already here. Um, and these are good jobs. These are jobs that pay higher than the regional average. Um, and so. Right now is a good time in terms of job opportunity. 25 years ago to right now, mm -hmm. what sticks up in your mind when you think of the Charleston Regional Development Alliance? Well, I think it was, uh, it was a commitment to working together as a region. Um, if you think about companies looking at a place to do business, they don't look at a particular county or a particular city. They look at a labor shed. They look at where all the workers are coming from within a community. And they're also looking at assets like our port, our state interstate system, the rail lines here. Essentially, we started as an intermodal hub based on the port. So I think the decision to work together as a community um, across all three counties um, to basically say we're going to band together and pool our resources and work together to try to create jobs here and make a better future for everybody uh, was just a huge decision in and of itself, and that started 25 years ago, and we've been building on that ever since. You talk about public transportation. Where should that discussion go in your mind? Well, I think uh, we're a lot bigger community than we were 25 years ago. We're, we're now at almost 800,000 residents across the three counties. We also have over 6 million tourists a year. Um, when I came here in the late 70s, Tourists came after Memorial Day and left before Labor Day, right? And it was a uh, and it was a very small part of the economy. Now it's a large part. Uh, the statistics are 81 percent of our workforce commutes to work alone in a car um, because of a lack of multimodal transportation options. The bus service we have is limited. Um, we don't have other options, and so. We have to commit to investing in other forms of transportation, whether it's bus rapid transit or pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure in order to move people around. The other part of that conversation that you can't separate is housing. And so as real estate prices have risen rapidly um, and more and more people have moved here, we've got a limited supply of housing. And that housing has been mostly constructed over the last 10 years disconnected from where the jobs are. They're further away from the job centers. So people have to drive further uh, to get to work 
and there's a restricted supply right now based on what the need is, and so housing costs have risen rapidly. So we need more transportation infrastructure, um, we need better roads, we need bus rapid transit and express buses, but we also need to build housing near where the jobs are so that people don't have to go as far and they have other options and ways to get to work and get home and get to the grocery store and get to school. And I know I'm probably beating a dead horse here, but affordable housing, that's another topic around here. Right. How do we get here with that? Well, I think um, we've restricted supply. And when I say we, we as a community and some of the different municipalities and counties, in response to growth and traffic congestion, have said they want they don't want to add any more housing currently. Um, the statistics are to just to keep up with new population growth, we have to add 7,500 new units of housing per year. Um, and that's really going back over the last 10 years. We haven't built 7,500 new housing units any year mm. over the last 10 years. And so even though wages have risen double digits, um, the cost of purchasing a home has risen somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. Rental costs have risen almost 50 percent, 49 percent over the last five years. And again, that's supply and demand. So we need more housing, we need to build it quicker, we need to build it at all price points, not just higher end housing, we need housing that's more affordable for people. Um, and we, in our work, in, in attracting jobs and helping job creation, need to focus, as we have been, um, but continue to focus on higher wage jobs to try to balance out the wage and income versus the cost of housing. What does the job outlook look right now in Charleston County when you look at it? Well, we, uh, just to uh, reiterate, we work across all three counties, Charleston, uh, Berkeley, and Dorchester. Sure. So I'll speak for, uh, okay. for all three sure, of sorry. them. Uh, even though Charleston County is doing a tremendous job. I won't leave uh, anybody else. All three of them are. Um, you know, our focus is on what we call high impact clusters. And we call them high impact because they pay higher than regional average, in some cases twice the regional average. And these are jobs that require STEM skills, what the Brooklyn Institution refers to as advanced industries. And so our focus are within that airspace, obviously because Boeing is located here. Right. Uh, automotive, we now have um, both a Mercedes uh, Sprinter van and a Volvo plant that just opened last week. It's big news. Um, and so automotive is a huge uh, factor for us. We also are focused on information technology, and there's so many homegrown companies here in software and IT that have done a great job. Life sciences related to the research and development going on at the medical university and at the different hospital systems here and creating medical device and medical equipment companies and growing our own from within that. And then what we call advanced logistics. So it's things related to the port but also related to moving the goods and services and the supply chain for those big OEM manufacturers. Those jobs on average pay twice what our regional average is. And those jobs also create um, significantly more jobs as a multiplier effect. And, uh, one job in aerospace can create up to seven more jobs in the community, everything from an entry level job to a management level job. So that's what we're predicting over the next five years at least, another 35,000 of those types of jobs being created. And you talk about five years, let me go beyond that. When you look at the three counties, Charleston, Berkeley, and Dorchester in the next 10 years, what will that look like in your mind? Well, here's what I hope it looks like. Um, our work is guided by what we call the One Region Strategy, and the vision of that strategy is for the Charleston to work together as a unified region to be a globally competitive place where um, people and businesses flourish. And one of the tenets of that strategy is that everyone should have an opportunity for a great education, a great job, and a decent place to live at an affordable price. And that's what I want the future of this region to be. That's what our leaders want the future of this region to be. And that's what I hope we see. There's a lot of things that have to happen within that, and, and the community has to work together toward those things. And raising the education quality across the board, um, making access to that education and access to that jobs more readily available, uh, helping people get into the education and training and skills training programs that help them have opportunities for those jobs and building world-class infrastructure so that we can move both people and goods and services around the community. 
What is your message right now to the South Carolina legislative session on these particular issues? Infrastructure, affordable housing, public transportation. Right. Well, our partner organization that we work very closely with is the Charleston Metro Chamber of Commerce. They focus on legislative policy and advocacy. Okay. We kind of look at it in terms of competitiveness. The things that we learn from looking at the data, the things that we learn from talking to companies that are interested in moving here, talking to entrepreneurs that are interested in this region, the issues that they're concerned about. Um, what they're concerned about now is the availability of talent. You know, can we create enough talent? Can we train enough people? Can we recruit enough people? And can we retain enough people to take these jobs that are being created? Right now there's a shortage of that. Um, and the two big issues that we've already talked about, traffic congestion and affordable housing and the linkage between those two, are the two biggest things, or the, really the three biggest things that we're focused on right now. I hate to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. What is that ideal company that you want to come to Charleston that you're currently attracting? Well, we're focused on suppliers for Volvo and Mercedes. We're focused on suppliers and uh, supply chain actors, uh, third-party logistics companies and engineering companies that support the construction of the um, Boeing 787. Right. Um, we're focused on supporting information technology companies that are primarily uh, software as service companies, companies like Blackbot and Benefit Focus, right. but also Boomtown and many of the others. There's over 300 companies now, ranging from five people to a couple of thousand. Right. Um, we're working with attracting companies like Thorn Research, which is a headquarters company that builds super high quality, high grade. Um, supplements and nutraceuticals for Olympic athletes and Major League Soccer and things like that. So these are the kind of jobs that take well-educated people um, for some of the jobs, but they also are what uh, the literature calls mid-tech jobs, jobs that may require a, um, a two-year associate's degree and some certificates. So, But those are the kind of companies and jobs that, that are going to drive higher wages for this region in the future. When you strip away your business hat, at the end of the day, who is Steve Warner? Steve Warner is a South Carolina native that grew up on a 300-acre farm in the upstate of South Carolina. Came to the College of Charleston in the late 70s when this was a much smaller place. <laughs> it was a much different place. And, um, and, and seeing what it was then, which was a very attractive and kind of romantic, but a little bit scruffy port city, mm. and seeing where it's come now. Right. Um, I'm, I'm pretty amazed by that and happy to be a part of that. Um, I, uh, my wife and I like to travel, uh, we like to ride bicycles, we like to go hear live music, Yes. Um, and we like to eat and drink well, which this is a perfect place <laughs> to do. This is the town for it. <laughs> well, Steve Warner, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you, Quinn. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Anytime. All right. Yes, sir.